Hey everyone, Rich here in the Accu Workshop and today we're taking a look at how to measure a screw. Now you might just think to measure a screw you just pop one between some calipers and there you go, but sometimes that's not the case. With that said, in this video we're going to take a look at measuring the length, the diameter and the pitch of screws so that if you ever need to find a replacement or spec something out in CAD, you know exactly where those dimensions are measured from. By the end, you know exactly how to measure a screw just like an engineer would. Let's head over to the workbench and have a look. Right, so here we've got a selection of screws, all the different head types and a pair of calipers. We've got a cap head, countersunk, raised countersunk, which are a little less common, but a great example for this video, but finally a grub screw. Now we're not going to go through every type of screw just because we'd be here all day and we need an extended director's cut with this video. So these are just cherry picked examples because they help reinforce the theory of how to measure the length of the screw. So looking at all these screws, these are all the same nominal length, especially when it comes to if you need to order them online. Now you're thinking, hang on, that cap head screw is longer than the grub screw overall, and you're right. But the key thing to understand here about measuring screws is that when you're looking at the length, depending on the head type, you'll measure from a different point. The easiest way to think about this is that when we measure the length of a screw, no matter if it's metric, imperial, or we just don't know, we're actually measuring how much of that screw sits below the surface of the workpiece. So a cap head would actually sit proud if you screwed it in as far as it'd go, whereas a countersunk screw would sit flush. To make this even easier, let me grab this handy jig that I've made up to help illustrate what we're talking about using the same screws we see here on the workbench. Left to right, we've got the same cap head, then countersunk, where's countersunk, and grub screw. Now all of these are 40 millimeters long. I know that because I went and got them out of stock. And I can check that by aligning my calipers to the base of the threaded shank and then measuring up to the point where the material would sit on that screw. Let's start with the cap head. On this type of screw where the head sits above the workpiece, we measure from below the head to the very end of the threads. This is the same for hex head bolts, pan heads, button heads, etc. Next we've got countersunk, where the head actually sits flush to the workpiece. Here we measure from the very top of the head to the very end of the threads, so every little bit. So next, I think the raised countersunk head illustrates this concept quite nicely, because for these we measure not from the top or the bottom, but from the part of the head that sits flush with the workpiece, this part right here. Where the countersunk part finishes and the raised head begins to the very end of the threads. Lastly, grub screws or set screws, whichever you want to call them, since these are headless fasteners, the only way to really measure the length of them is to measure the entire thing, so the overall length, tip to tip, including any tips on the end, like a nylon point or ball spring. Cool, so now we know how to measure length, let's move on to measuring the thread size of the screw. There's two key measurements to obtain here to fully understand thread size as a whole. These are the major diameter and the spacing between the threads, which is the pitch for metric or TPI turns per inch for imperial. We'll start with major diameter, which is the overall diameter of the threads. Think of it as the maximum width of that thread section. And to measure this, we can simply place the threads between the jaws of our calipers like this, making sure that the threads sit flat on the jaws. One key tip here is that you always want to angle the screw in the opposite way to the jaws, just to make sure that you always get the maximum possible major diameter. If you measure parallel to the jaws like this, there's a good chance that you're not going to be square up and then your measurements could be wrong. Another good tip here is to give the screw a bit of a wiggle while it's in the caliper jaws, just to make sure that it's sealed correctly. This also helps make sure that you're not measuring in between the threads, which can also throw off your measurements. So for this cap head, we've got 4.9 millimeters, which is within the tolerance for five millimeters. So we can safely say that it's M5 screw. If you're ever unsure though, we've got the handy metric to imperial diameter chart on the Accu website, which will help you find the closest standardized major diameter from your measurements. I'll link to that in the description below. It's a really useful page to keep bookmarked. So we now know our diameter, but we still need to know what the pitch or TPI is to fully understand the full thread size picture. To begin with, pitch is for metric screws and turns per inch or TPI is for imperial. They both essentially relate to the spacing between each thread from one peak to the next. We'll approach this as if we don't know if this cap head screw is metric or imperial to give you the best example of figuring this out from scratch. So in this situation, we want to essentially take both pitch and TPI measurements and compare them to the same metric to imperial conversion chart I spoke about earlier to find the closest match. It should be mostly obvious from those charts which one it'll be. If you're ever unsure, chances are you want to double check your measurements first before you try anything else. So for pitch, we'll try to finally adjust our calipers to measure from one peak to the next. If the threads you're measuring are really fine, then you can always measure the amount of threads over say 10 millimeters and then say divide the 10 millimeters by the number of thread peaks that you find within that section and that'll give you a good idea of the pitch. Similarly for TPI we set our calipers to an inch and count the number of threads in between that spacing. If the screws have a shorter than an inch, say half an inch, you just measure half an inch and then double the number of threads to form what is essentially a full TPI measurement. For example four turns in half an inch so eight turns per inch. All right time to wrap this one up. 
So that's an overview of how to accurately measure a screw and all of its key dimensions. I really hope this guide helps you avoid headaches in trying to find replacement screws or even just working on your next projects. Remember, if you find out the sizing of your screw from this video, Accu's got you covered, no matter if you need just one replacement screw. If you enjoyed this guide, please consider subscribing and suggest any other guides you'd like to see in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, catch you in the next one.